Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Andrew Dalton. I'm the executive director of the Adams County Historical Society in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us once again for our weekly program series. I'm very excited about tonight's program. We're going to be talking in depth about uh, our new museum, which is a major component of our new building that's under construction. Uh, we're actually starting the first phase of construction uh, right here in, in the next few weeks, and uh, we'll be working on this new building for the next year and a half and hope to have it open by the end of 2022. Um, so thank you for supporting the Historical Society. Of course, we preserve millions of historic items in Gettysburg uh, that pertain to all aspects of Adams County's 300-year story. Um, and we're currently located in a very old Victorian house um, that doesn't meet our needs in terms of climate control and fire protection. Uh, and so this new building is really uh, an essential factor for us as an organization to, to move ahead and to, to have what we need to succeed. Um, and this new building is very exciting. It'll have um, an, an archive, a large archive space uh, and a reading room so that you can continue to come in and do research. Um, it'll have a large event center for programs and all kinds of community uh, initiatives. And uh, it'll also have probably the, the, the cornerstone of the new building is our museum. Uh, it's a 5,000 square foot space. And uh, we could not be more excited to be working with a, a fantastic design team uh, from Healy Kohler Design out of Washington. Um, and that's really the topic of, of tonight's program. We're going to hear more about Healy Kohler uh, and their past projects, as well as the, the thinking that's gone into our museum so far. Um, so we're not going to give away everything about our new museum, but we will show you a little bit more about where the planning is at. And uh, I think it'll be very exciting to, to walk through some past projects with Terry so that you all can get familiar with, uh, with uh, the, the, the firm that we're, we're using for the project. So um, before I go on, I also want to thank the Dobbin House Tavern, our, our sponsor for all of our 2021 programs. Uh, thank you to our friends at the Dobbin House. Um, and also there is a donate button on the post tonight. So I hope you'll consider supporting the Historical Society if you enjoyed the program. Uh, we do have a match for, for tonight's program. It's $500. So uh, every dollar you donate will be matched with a dollar to support our new building. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Terry. So Terry Healy is the co-founder and the design principal with Healy Kohler Design. Um, and he was, he's been in the field for 30 years and previously worked for Gallagher and Associates, which is pretty well known in Gettysburg, I think, for having done the Gettysburg National Military Park Museum. Um, and uh, Terry's also a, um, has extensive knowledge in exhibit design and also, um, you know, a master planning, graphic design, media design, signage and wayfinding and exhibits. So uh, Terry's also won the National Endowment for the Arts Presidential Award. Um, and I'm so happy to be joined with, with Terry here so that we can talk about Healy Kohler and, and some of our uh, exciting plans that are in the works for the Historical Society Museum. So thank you for being with us, Terry. And, and I'm excited to, to get into some of these projects that you've worked on. Oh, it's good to be here. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so we can go ahead. I think if you'd like, Terry, maybe we can share your screen and, and talk about some of these uh, projects. I think um, you'll get to it, I'm sure, but uh, one of the best known projects that Healy Kohler has worked on um, is the uh, Museum of the American Revolution in Philadelphia. And we actually had the opportunity to visit the Museum of the American Revolution with Terry um, a, probably a month and a half ago, and we really enjoyed seeing their work there. Um, but I, I think uh, if, if you want, maybe you can go through some other projects and uh, I'm sure you'll touch on the Philadelphia project. <laughs> sure, and um, actually in relation to that, we just started um, the visitor center, uh, visitor experience um, for into the state of New Jersey at Washington Crossing. Oh, wow. Um, so there's a great tie in to the, the right. Philadelphia Museum as well. Wonderful. So a little bit about Healy Kohler Design and myself. Um, as Andrew stated, uh, I've been in the business for 25 to 30 years. Um, I was a partner at uh, Gallagher and Associates um, for over 20 years. And uh, I actually concepted the um, Gettysburg Visitor Center way back when. Um, it seems <laughs> like forever, quite honestly. Um, so, uh, and I've always enjoyed going up to Gettysburg with family and friends um, in uh, Adams County. So a little bit about uh, my firm, uh, Healy Kohler Design. I'm a partner with my lovely wife, uh, Susan Kohler. Uh, she handles all the financial and business operations. Um, I do all of the, I handle all of the design, the creative design. Um, development um, and uh, working with the clients and that interactions with that. Uh, as Andrew said, we, we have worked nationally 
um, with pretty much a, a, a gear toward uh, the mid-Atlantic uh, and southern states um, of the country. Um, but we have worked uh, in, I've worked in Puerto Rico and England and Egypt uh, throughout my career. Um, so we have a lot of experience and a lot of traction and connections to uh, what is out there and what the visitor experience can be like, um, the types of engagement, uh, types of interactivity, um, and how we want to position um, the exhibit experiences as well as this museum uh, within not only the community, but also the marketplace of, of Gettysburg with that. So um, just getting into, you know, we're, we're uh, an office of 14, um, heavily diverse between architects, interior designers, graphic designers, and industrial designers um, with project managers to help um, and coordinators also to help with that. Uh, one of the, <clears throat> so I've worked with the Smithsonian um, since the uh, early 1990s. Um, and this was our latest project, which was the watching Oprah, the Oprah Winfrey show um, in American culture at the African American Museum, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. I guess I should be much more formal with that. Um, but I also wanted to bring it up because we're also known as a firm that can collaborate with in-house staff. Um, and Andrew and Tim and uh, the rest of the team knows that, uh, you know, we like to get into the, the details of the content, how the content can be presented um, and working with everybody's aspirations and visions of what, of what the, the museum, museum can be. Um, that's the way we, we work with the Smithsonian Institution. If you can imagine, uh, there's just not one curator, there's four <laughs> or five curators. There's two or three writers and researchers and we're there to, you know, guide, guide the entire content team through the process um, with that. Uh, we also work with the National Park Service. We've been fortunate to have a, a long-term contract with them. Um, though none of our projects have opened in the last 15 years, uh, 15 months. Uh, with COVID, um, but we were fortunate enough to uh, handle the visitor experience in the Washington Monument when it was completed, the renovation was completed. Um, but uh, we've also worked on the Jimmy Carter National Mon Historic Site, and that is about to open. Um, it's wow. been completed. Uh, and also Arlington House and Arlington Cemetery, um, where quite honestly, and this is how that relates a little bit to that, is that in Arlington Cemetery, the whole experience is facilitated dialogue that we bring out the people on from the site. You know, Robert E. Lee is the example, but also Selma Gray, one of the enslaved that actually saved a lot of the artifacts from uh, George Washington's uh, career. Um, and what was nice about that is it's all decision making. So it's actually engaging the visitors to think about, uh, to, to voice their opinions and their agendas and um, about the historic events that happened there. And what we want to do is actually bring that type of facilitation into the, the historical society's visitor experience. Um, so you can learn about the different people, um, how the generations of people from the county um, have impacted the country, uh, both personally, uh, nationally, um, and you know, through industry. So. Uh, we're also known for military history museums. Uh, we just got completed the Terp National Purple Heart Hall of Honor um, down, uh, well, up in New Windsor, um, New York. Uh, we've worked for the last six years the National Infantry Museum down in Georgia. Um, and of course, uh, the Museum of American Revolution, uh, quasi-military museum. <laughs> but just uh, where we're at also is that we've, um, and I think you're going to see some uh, renderings of this is that over the last summer we planned and created the visitor experience for the National Medal of Honor Museum down in Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So that's another type of market that we have is that we're known for the military um, visitor experiences. Also, and this is what drew us to Adams County as well, is that uh, if, if there's a special collections or library out there, um, we usually get a call. Um, because we're known for um, our, our knowledge and expertise with conservation um, and working with uh, the staff on making sure that we can design cases and delivery systems that can rotate very easily and burden-free 
um, with uh, the, the, this type of material. Um, as you can imagine, rotations happen every three or four months. Uh, we set up an experiences that um, these documents, um, artifacts and collections can be changed uh, within that type of schedule. Um, you know, usually not too many people have just the sole job in these types of institutions that they can just rotate collections on a day daily basis. <laughs> uh, usually it's, it's uh, uh, added value um, for the staff. So uh, we've worked down in uh, UGA, uh, the Hardwick Rare Book and Manuscript Library. That case in that image, just to let you know, is the case that will hold the Confederate Constitution. Um, the Hargret Library has that and they bring it out for one day a year and they get a thousand visitors a day that day. Um, so again, working through uh, their needs and visions is uh, a little bit of where we're after with the libraries and archives. Um, and then a little elaborating on some other projects, the South Carolina Historical Society, which was uh, uh, caught Andrew's attention, Tim's attention. Um, this was actually in a historic building, um, a Robert Mills building. Um, he was the first uh, trained American architect and he designed the Washington Monument as the example. Um, so this was the fireproof building down in Charleston, uh, the South Carolina Historical Society uh, acquired the building. Um, it's obviously fireproof, uh, it's all brick. Um, and uh, they do have wood floors and that's the only thing that's inflammable um, <laughs> now. They used to have slate, um, but uh, we put in wood floors during the restoration. But really it's, it's roughly about 3000 square feet and it's six rooms. Their largest artifact is the building itself. Um, but what we wanted to do was in each room highlight an era of Charleston's history, um, align it with the collections but then also bring in interactivity and media experiences that can engage the visitors from room to room to room. And a little bit of this, and we've talked to Andrew and his, his uh, team, is that when, you, when we do design exhibits, you have to fill the space, right? If you have 5,000 square feet, you have to put experience within that 5,000 square feet. And the nice thing about media is that you can get more types of experience and engagement within that, that space. So instead of just saying that I'm gonna walk through 5,000 square feet, this is where the term experience comes in. You're gonna be engaged in that 5,000 square feet and actually um, understand a little bit more, get personal connections with what you discover on these media interactives. So, and uh, again, being an architectural uh, wonder, this fireproof building, we, we designed it to fit within the building. So it wasn't obtrusive, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't a conflict to the, to the look of the building. Um, we wanted to make it as seamless and as, 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 um, as presentable as possible. As an example like that, because the rooms were, um, you know, intimate, I should say, uh, we didn't have the cases go all the way down to the floor. Um, we, we, shell, we, we placed them on these shelves or cans, cantilevers out of the wall. And to make the room, to, to make sure that we didn't make the room look even smaller. Um, so that there's little tricks of the trade that we try to work with, with that. And again, just another image of this, you can see using the collections in the background, um, in the cases, matching that up with the interpretive graphics. But, um, this was an interactive table. Um, and we, the, what you can do is you can bring up the historic maps of the low country. And from there, you can understand a little bit more of the people that you've been introduced to, where they live, what they did, um, and then bring up more collections and documents relating to those families um, associated with that. Another project that um, I, I want to show, and this is related to um, the Historical Society also, is that, so this was the Customs House um, which is an architect, again, a historic uh, architectural building down in Clarksville, Tennessee. But they wanted to, they got their grant money from the JC's foundation. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to design a new exhibit talking about leadership within the community. 
And so we worked with them on developing an interpretive experience, highlighting the different markets or the different themes of the community, whether it was medical, healthcare, or education, or performing arts. Um, and then matched up their, brought in their assets of their collections associated with that. But what we also wanted to do was present much more of an image piece. So this was in a 2,400 square foot space. And in the rest of the museum, there is no media. So what we did was we brought in four media pieces and you're seeing three there. And what we wanted to do was make this the showcase for future um, fundraising for the rest of the museum. And I bring this up, well, not because we're thinking that the historical society, we're doing it as a showcase, but the exhibit experience is an image of the society. It's an image of the county. So what we wanna do is we wanna make it the best that it can be uh, within that 5,000 square feet and actually really meet the objectives and the goals of the exhibit experience with that. Um, here's another image of that. You can see that it's very classical. Again, it's a historic building, so we couldn't do too much with the different walls and so forth. Um, but we had another interactive um, there for engagement that in the end, it, it discussed a little bit of the history of the JCs and how the JCs were contributors to the community. Um, but then it got into a little bit more of the um, uh, aspects of the timeline of the community and the historical significance of how the community grow, grew with that. Another historical society that we worked with was with the Palm Beach County um, down in Florida, uh, the West Palm Beach. Um, and this was very interesting because we, we had two separate galleries um, in the space. So one thing, one gallery we dealt with the land um, and the natural resources of the county. And then the second gallery we, tell, that we dealt with the cultural history and the people that are associated within, within the county and that had impact on to the county. Um, and what was interesting about that, if I can go back, is that um, we, we had three enge community engagement meetings at the very beginning and then followed those up with through uh, concept design and design development to show them exactly how their input um, was measured and accomplished within the exhibit design process. Uh, here, so this is, this is the historical society the, of Iowa. Um, and um, they have, you know, they have a big building. Um, they I think their total exhibit spaces uh, equal to about 40,000 square feet. But we've been working with them um, since 2013. And again, in, in great collaboration with their in-house in uh, curatorial and exhibits team. And we, we've been designing and creating experiences for um, anywhere from 2,500 square foot exhibits to uh, 6,500 square foot exhibits. So we just go into each of the galleries. This was fun because it was writing through history. Um, if anyone knows the history of of, or the, of the cultural of Iowa uh, back in 73, I think it was, or 71, 73, um, they started a bike ride across Iowa. Um, and it's called Reg Bry. Um, and it's done with the Des Moines Registry. Um, and it started with two guys that just wanted, two reporters that just wanted to get out and report on the people and they got the okay to ride their bike across Iowa and, you know, introduce islands uh, within their columns. And they started with 25 people. And by the end of the ride, that first year it was 300. Now they have close to 20,000 riders. Wow. And it's an economic boom. So this was an exhibit that was celebrating um, the history of Ray Bry. Uh, and, and working with their, their casework with that. Another exhibit that we did for them was Hollywood in the Heartland. Um, and we took six films that were dealing with Iowa. The Music Man is the example. Um, the Field of Dreams is another. Uh, Madison County, Bridges of Madison County. Um, but we, the, whole, the whole idea about this was that, um, the whole vision of this was that they, we wanted to express the idea that the vision, the, the image of Iowa on Hollywood 
and Hollywood's image of islands and how that plays back and forth with that. As far as design goes, we came up with a faux marquee that we had back projections up there that showed uh, the different actor, actors, actresses, producers from Iowa. Um, the, uh, we, we had the um, uh, uh, Oscars from Phyllis Leachman and Jane, uh, John Wayne in there. But most importantly up here, those are, yes, the marionettes from The Sound of Music. Wow. Uh, because an <laughs> Iowan created those and they were able to get that, get those into the exhibit. So what I want to talk about this was what was interesting about Iowa project and their historical society is that their collections was actually dealing with um, what was basically based on all the way through World War II. So what's nice about th this with all their new galleries is that they've been collecting all this much more contemporary collections and building their collections based on these exhibits. Um, and that's been very helpful for them. This was one of the last exhibits that we did with them. And this was the, what we call the visible vault where <laughs> it was about 2,500 square feet. It looks kind of dark, but it was basically the concept of open storage. So not only is it 2,500 square feet, but there's 2,000 artifacts in that 2,500 wow. square feet. And we use uh, iPads to bring out the, the interpretation for each one of those um, artifacts. But the idea was to get as much collections out onto the floor so visitors can actually um, experience those collections. Uh, and, you know, got to have something for the, the toddlers. But, you know, again, another success story with Iowa the, the historical society is that um, we, we worked with them on this early learning center. Um, and again, it's roughly about 3000 square feet, um, but it has taken off. And again, pre COVID uh, their attendance has um, risen greatly because of not only this one gallery, but because of the programs um, that surround this gallery. So getting that younger element in, um, is very helpful. Some, uh, some other projects around the country, um, we've worked with the Florida Museum of Natural History for about you know, eight years um, on various projects. This was the Central Gallery. Um, and this goes back to that theme of creating an image for the institution um, for that. So uh, on the, one of the first projects we worked with was First Colony. Um, which opened in St. Augustine. And what you're seeing here is an immersive experience that when you walk in, you're in the galley, uh, the, the lower level of the ship um, and everyone's speaking Spanish. Um, and you can look through the portholes and see the views of what they would have seen. Um, so it was this call and repeat um, type atmosphere. And of course you could lift uh, cannonballs, you could tie knots. Um, and then it had the progression of gold. So these were cases that had gold in it um, that they found as an, on, in the archaeology dig associated with it. But this is the type of atmosphere that we're thinking about for the historical society is to have this type of, you know, I'm going to say space or room that we can control all the elements and make it totally immersive and give people um, that emotional connection to you know, what, what it was like to live through part of the battle. So as you move through the exhibit, we have engagement of the first Thanksgiving down in St. Augustine. We have flip panels um, where we show the toys that there was part that kids used or played with during the settlement, um, all found on site in the archeology span program. And lastly, what we're looking at is uh, we're moving into another gallery there um, of Florida water. Um, again, uh, climate change is upon us. Uh, Florida has rising waters, um, the importance of the aquifer down there. Uh, they wanna, we wanna make that much more aware. So this was a little bit of an aquifer lab image. And as you can see, we have touchable. This is a, a, a cart. It can be moved out into the space that can be used by docents. We have interactive media that you can discover more about the aquifers and actually go down, uh, allows you to you know, discover the aquifer 
uh, the different types of aquifers below you. And then of course, bringing in the cultural history and the collections and the cases above with that. So another part of what we do is we do sports museums. Right now we're working on the National Sailing Museum and uh, we're planning the International Marathon Center up in Massachusetts. Wow. But this was the Soccer Hall of Fame. And I'm including this because it is what you would say <laughs> far from a historical society, right? Yes. <laughs> but it is all about the experience. And it is all about how to engage. And it's about when you come into a museum, we want to catch your attention. We want to provide you with excitement. And we want you to have fun. And that's exactly what we want to do with the historical society too. <laughs> we want people to have fun. We want them to have this memorable experience. We want, to the, we want them to talk it up after they leave. And we want it to be different than what could be expected in Gettysburg. So uh, this was uh, down in Frisco, Texas with FC Dallas. There's 270 scarves from around the country in that case. Wow. Um, and it was all about making people feel inclusive. As you, as you can see is when you walk into the exhibit, it's much more entertainment. Um, it's exciting. We're using lighting um, effects on it. Uh, and you go through different activities. And what's neat about the, this is that we brought in facial recognition. And <laughs> all these activities are, uh, after you register, all the activities are recorded on your microsite. So you can keep on visiting the site after you leave. But most importantly, when you come back, and there are a lot of return visitors here, um, they can just be, um, they'll, the facial recognition will obviously recognize them, bring up their name, wow. and you can continue your, your type of experience with that. And again, the Museum of American Revolution, um, which was a great project. And um, this, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with everybody, we were the fourth exhibit designer on this project. <laughs> The exhibit lasted, the, the exhibit was envisioned 16 years before it opened. Wow. Um, and it was up to be up in, um, uh, you know, Pencil, uh, Valley Forge. Um, and it was a private public type of uh, experience. Uh, when that kind of faded away, it was brought to the visitor center site, the old visitor center site down in the historic district, uh, uh, the, the park, the historic park in Philadelphia. So it's, it's on third and chestnut right in the thick of things. Um, which was actually interesting for me because this project has many connections. Um, number one, uh, the third exhibit designer that, um, didn't was, I replaced the third exhibit designer and that was my first job, uh, <laughs> in museum design. The other coincidence is that I designed the independence visitor center that took the place of the old visitor center that this is now the site of. And the third was this tent, the marquee tent was secured by Selma Gray at Arlington house that we did the interpretive experience for. Huh. So the museum of American revolution has gotten much acclaim. It, uh, if anyone has not been there, they should try to go see it. See the tent theater. The marquee tent of Washington is their iconic um, display. And that's what they use to market. Um, just like we want to use some types of collections at the, the historical society to market, but it is a good experience. It's two and a half hours. Uh, you'll learn everything you want to know about the revolution and everything you didn't know about the revolution. But <laughs> what it isn't about is it's not about the strategies of battle. It's not about all the generals. It's about us as Americans wanting to have our independence and us being revolutionaries. And that's a little bit of where we're headed with the historical society's experience is that we want to introduce, because of the collections and the rich history, we want to introduce the individuals of Adams County. Uh, we want to bring their voices out and we want everyone that has the opportunity to come to the historical society to realize that Yes, one of the most famous Civil War battles in this country is steps away. But we want to talk about the people that actually lived through it. 
And we want to talk about the people that actually grew up before those three days and definitely what has happened around the county with the families and the individuals um, after that. So, we, and we want people to be connected. We want the visitors to be connected to these residents. So just a little bit more about American Revolution because as Andrew may start realizing, once you hire us, you don't get rid of us. <laughs> so uh, we, and we have a great client, personal client and personal relationships um, with all of our projects. So we did the hands-on, the learning center um, with, the, with the museum. Uh, we did the Hamilton was here, a temporary exhibit when Hamilton, the production uh, showed up in Philadelphia. Um, which was coordinated with education activities. Um, and we've also done two or three other uh, temporary exhibits. I think in closing, and I use this, and this is the Medal of Honor and Leadership, Leadership and Education Center down in South Carolina. Um, and these are the types of visuals and the vision that you're gonna see in the future from, from Andrew and his staff uh, that we, we create. So, the, and what's interesting about this experience is that you know, we talk about, we want to honor the Medal of Honor awardees, right? But we also want to, because of the themes and content of being a Medal of Honor recipient, about talking about commitment and patriotism and service and so forth, we wanted to, and this is the exhibit plan, we wanted to have bookends in area one and area seven that is talking directly to the visitors as they come in. Like we are Americans, what does it mean to be an American? Um, and at the end is shaping the future. How can you be a participant in your community like these Medal of Honor recipients are now within the community mentoring and contributing to the success of, of people and, and the communities, uh, whether, whether, whatever age group and so forth. So we wanted to make it much more inclusive for that. And of course, in the center, we go through the history of the Medal of Honor and the recipients, the, the gallantry and the courage uh, that was expressed by that. Um, and bring out those recipients that you just did not know. That, and here's one that's close to you is, uh, now I'm sure that I'll get this wrong, um, but uh, you'll see on the next slide that we, we have the, the high watermark. Um, of Gettysburg and we have a diorama and the idea is that from the diorama you can see it from both the northern perspective and then the southern perspective but somewhere off to the side was General Howard and he was there and he received the Medal of Honor at Gettysburg but he also founded Howard University in Washington DC um, and those are the types of stories that we want to bring out. So this is We Are American Gallery uh, wow. with projection and engagement. Um, but this is the scene for the diorama of the, of the third day, the high water on, uh, on, on Cemetery Hill, Cemetery Ridge. Um, and then we move into uh, Fallujah, um, uh, the war on terrorism. Um, and that's a VR experience uh, throughout. Um, so we do use media and so forth with that. And then this is this whole idea of um, how to engage in your community and be a leader um, in your community, community of shaping the future. And a little bit of what we're doing and we're, we're, we're de dealing with this and trying to create these types of experiences at, with, the, with Andrew and the Historical Society is that, so this is a drone type shot of crossing America and bringing America all the way together and that's up in the ceiling. Um, and on these interactive tables, you can design your own guide on and then the guide on is sent there. So you can leave a piece of you and your creativity of you um, within the space. And we wanna do that with a historical society too. Um, so there's outreach, uh, there's that sense of belonging and that since we've introduced these residents, uh, since we introduced the residents of Adams County to the visitors coming in, we want the visitors to be able to be part of that community, um, at least graciously uh, within the exhibit. And that is me rambling. I apologize <laughs> for the long presentation. I get excited all about that. I mean, I think in closing, I've been fortunate 
to have the responsibility of presenting people's stories. Um, and at the same time, what we want to do is we want to also make it sustainable. Um, so every decision is an objective decision of making sure that we are hitting our goals, that we're bringing in the types of visitors that we're expecting, and that we um, allow them to enjoy themselves. But at the same time, we want it to be memorable enough that they become our advocates out there with that. Okay. <laughs> I get to take a break for a minute. Yes. Thank, well, thank you, Terry. That, that's wonderful. And I, I firmly believe that, you know, the best way that we can move forward as the historical society, you know, in this project is to be open and transparent with uh, the many members and viewers and, and, and uh, friends we have all across the country. So this really is part of that. We want you to understand our thinking and, and uh, we want you to meet the people who are involved with this project. And uh, uh, without, you know, our members and supporters, we wouldn't be able to do this. We've already uh, raised close to, to $5 million for this project. And that's because of you and because of um, the support that we've seen uh, that's not just rooted so deeply in our community here, but really is across the country. Um, so anyway, um, I wanted to give a little bit more of a, a, a peek at what we're thinking with this new museum here in Gettysburg. Um, and uh, so Terry and I have had a lot of conversations about this. It's uh, nothing new to him, but I think to, to all of you, I wanted to kind of go through the... Uh, the, the, the preliminary plans for how we're going to divide up the space. Uh, so we have 5,000 square feet, as we mentioned earlier, and uh, it's very hard to pack over 300 years of material and hundreds, if not thousands of artifacts into this space. Uh, but, you know, you can also do a lot with 5,000 square feet, as we saw with some of the projects that Terry highlighted. Um, but what we decided early on, um, and I should really credit Tim Smith and, and Sue Boardman, our two uh, lead historians on the project, but we decided decided to, to separate things into to nine chronological sections. Um, and we have a lot of artifacts to support each of these nine sections. Now, some, of course, are bigger than others. And, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, um, we, we looked at our collection. We've identified at over 2,000 artifacts for potential inclusion in the museum, um, as well as you know probably over 1,000 images. Of course, all of those won't make it in. But we're going to uh, do our best to highlight the ones that we think are most uh, um, you know, viewer friendly and engaging and, and help to connect us with the, the stories. But uh, uh, starting from the beginning, of course, the prehistoric past here in the county is, is really fascinating. We have dinosaur footprints from a quarry in Upper Adams County. We have a meteorite uh, that was discovered near Littlestown. Um, and we want to talk about the geological makeup of the county, um, the, the rock formations like Devil's Den that are so famous, how these rock formations came to exist and, and uh, you know, the, the, some of the science behind that. Um, so that'll be the, the, the very first thing to greet you when you, you enter the museum. Uh, of course, then we're going to talk about the Native Americans that lived here for, you know, approximately 10,000 years prior to European settlement. Uh, we have thousands of artifacts associated with Native Americans and their presence here in the county. Um, so it'll be wonderful to display those items for the really for the first time. Uh, and then we'll get into uh, the early European settlement, the, the frontier life in Adams County. Uh, and it was actually uh, long before it became Adams County in 1800, but there were settlers here, European settlers here as early as the 1730s. Um, and so we're going to talk about their early experiences, um, their ethnic origin, their um, you know, disputes over land and, and ownership of property, uh, as well as the, the Penn government and the relations between uh, the, the, the authorities of Pennsylvania and these uh, early immigrant settlers who were really uh, out on their own in this very open and, and, and <laughs> you know, unclaimed territory. Uh, there were Native Americans in, in some parts of Pennsylvania, but for the most part, they had left this area by the time Europeans arrived. Um, and uh, when the Europeans arrived, though, I mean, they were um, on the frontier. Uh, there, there was very little settlement west of us. And uh, during the French and Indian War, there were raids through Adams County. Uh, there, were, there were local citizens who were killed, captured, um, and injured. And uh, we also had local veterans who uh, went off to serve in the French and Indian War. Um, so we're going to highlight those early topics. Of course, Mary Jameson's probably the most famous story uh, from this early period, her, her narrative of captivity and then living among the Native Americans uh, for the rest of her life. Um, so we're going to talk about her and some others who are probably not as, as well known. Um, and then, of course, we'll get into the, the revolutionary period where we start to see roads and taverns and, and towns forming 
course, Gettysburg's probably the, the most famous of those towns, and we're going to highlight the, the origin story of our community, uh, the Gettys family, the Gettys Tavern, um, and uh, you know the, the, the people involved with these early decisions in, in getting the, the county seat established here in Gettysburg. Um, so that's the, uh, a section where we might actually you know, talk about what it's like to be in a colonial tavern. Um, so we'll have more on that eventually. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the uh, early uh, first half of the 19th century, uh, we have Gettysburg really developing as a place and Adams County developing uh, with railroads and, and industry and, and uh, the, the lead up to the Civil War. Of course, there's a lot of issues being debated in the community about being on the edge of the Mason-Dixon line with fugitive slaves coming into Adams County and how to handle some of these issues. Um, of course, the development of the Black community is a very interesting topic uh the, the the black community surrounded uh you know the, what is now called the third ward of gettysburg um and and the the ame church as a pillar of that community we're going to talk about what it was like for for that group of, of citizens living so close to the line between freedom um and uh and slavery and uh so of course another big topic in this section is thaddeus stevens uh as a prominent young attorney in Gettysburg, we have a lot of artifacts and stories associated with Thaddeus Stevens, and we'll highlight him very thoroughly. And then uh, we'll, we'll move into the Civil War period. And, uh, you know, it, it's been a, an ongoing debate, I would say, um, about how much of this museum should be related to the Civil War period. You know, of course, Gettysburg and the Battle of Gettysburg is the key moment in the history of the county. Uh, it changed everything about Adams County. Um, it changed people's lives. It ended people's lives. Um, and uh, it, it changed the entire uh, economic <laughs> system here in the county from you know agriculture and the carriage industry to tourism. Uh, and so that is a major topic and it obviously can't be shortchanged. Uh, but we do have all these amazing stories before and after, as, as Terry mentioned earlier. So uh, we've decided uh, about a third of the museum will be devoted to the Civil War period um, and a third to the period before and a third to the period after. Um, so that's a, we, we found a, a good balance there, I believe. And, and I should mention, when we do talk about the Civil War and the Battle of Gettysburg, we're not going to be talking about generals and command decisions and, and strategy. Uh, that's been done very well at other museums and, and uh, like the, the National Park Service Museum in particular. Uh, we're going to talk about the people who lived here and the families that, that went through this, this ordeal. Um, and we want to get you as close to that experience as we can uh, through immersion, um, making you actually <laughs> putting you in that position where you feel and see and, and experience the the sights of the battle. Um, but uh, we're also going to show you some of the amazing artifacts that were left to the historical society by these families. We have diaries, we have letters, we have uh, ar other ar artifacts, articles of clothing, relics picked up off the battlefield. It is an amazing collection. And we're really going to put as many of these items in this section as we can so that you see uh, the actual toll that that this uh this event you know uh the the toll that that, that the community uh that was taken uh in gettysburg and, and throughout the county not just right in the town uh, but in the surrounding towns and townships um so the civil war period of course will also highlight the local soldiers who went off to fight um and we have many artifacts associated with with uh, their lives so that'll be a another good storyline to to follow through that section and we'll cap things off there with the story of the Gettysburg Address and the many residents who were there and witnessed Lincoln's famous speech. Uh, some of them, you know, shook his hand, interacted with him. And uh, especially we have a lot of wonderful accounts left by children of their memories of, of Lincoln and uh, what it was like to be there that day. Uh, so we really want to just put you in that moment as much as we can through artifacts, stories, photographs. Um, it's an incredible event. Um, and we have so many items of, of really of national significance that relate to, to those 25 hours that Lincoln was here in Gettysburg. Um, and uh, so then after the uh, uh, Civil War section, we have two galleries toward the end of, of the museum. One is really focused on that post-war period from the eight, late 1860s to uh, the First World War. And so we have kind of two separate tracks that we're going to follow in this section. One is the, the tourism track, the development of the battlefield, preservation, visitation, uh, the battlefield guides, the commercial enterprises that were born out of the battle, um, and, and the incredible visitation we saw almost immediately after 
uh, after the battle in 1863 that we still see today. Uh, so we're going to follow that, uh, that track on, on one side of the gallery. And then uh, we'll also highlight what's happening in the community during this period. We have the Spanish American war, the first world war, um, a lot of things going on in Gettysburg uh, with the development of the town um, and some industries, especially the fruit industry. Um, that's a big story that we're going to follow um, how Adams County became uh, such a, a well-known a place for, for fruit growing and especially apples. Um, and uh, we're going to highlight that story as well in, in this section. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the, the more recent history, the last hundred or, or, you know, 120 years, um, we will, we'll talk about World War II and Eisenhower, but also a lot of what's going on in the community. Um, some social issues like the, the fight for women's rights and the right to vote in 1919 and 1920. We have a lot of wonderful articles about suffrage and, and what's happening and the debates that are going on in the community. And then, of course, civil rights. We have a, an incredible movement um, to integrate and to uh, make Gettysburg and Adams County a, a more welcoming place and a place where where there's you know equal opportunity uh, for all and there's an incredible story of how our, our local black community fought to to make sure that that Gettysburg was a, a better place for everyone um, so we're going to highlight those stories and and uh, we have some amazing artifacts and a wonderful partnership with uh, the local black history group uh, the Gettysburg Black History Museum um, so we'll be working together to to create this experience that kind of caps things off um, and as Terry said we want to end with something that allows people to to be part of all of this, you know, whether you're a, a local resident, somebody who's lived here your whole life, or you're somebody who just visited Gettysburg and loves Gettysburg for the history, we want you to feel uh, like you're part of our story. Because if you come here and visit, uh, you are part of our story. Uh, tourism really defines the last 150 years of our our community, and uh, without the the many visitors who come here, we we wouldn't have all of these wonderful uh, treasures, and we wouldn't have uh, you know the the support to to do things like this. So. Um, no matter what your connection is to Gettysburg and to Adams County, we want you to, to be part of all of this and, and to have uh, your story included with all the stories that we're, we're highlighting of all these incredible people. Um, and, you know, I've, I've pointed this out before, and Terry and I have talked about it, but when you look at small communities, Gettysburg is, and Adams County really, are, are, it's hard to find another small community anywhere in the country or really in the world that has seen so many events of national and sometimes international uh, proportion, like the Battle of Gettysburg, the Gettysburg Address, the presidency of Dwight D. Eisenhower, um, and, and so many other smaller stories that, that really uh, deserve to, to have a light shined uh, on them. So uh, we are so lucky to be working with Terry um, and his team at Healy Kohler. Uh, this is going to be, a, I think, a, another year to year and a half process before we're opening our doors, but uh, we will continue to update you as things progress. And uh, I'm excited to hear your input as well. So please feel free to email me or to leave a comment on this uh, video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you'd like to see in our museum. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, this, this uh, nine section slide here that we're showing you is just very preliminary and a lot of topics will be included under each one of these larger topics. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. And, and again, we really just appreciate the support we've seen uh, from all of you, from the community and from people all around the country. Uh, and then finally, I just wanted to give uh, a very uh, <laughs> a preliminary uh, look for all of you at the, the space. Uh, so this is uh, really, I, I think it's been so creatively laid out by by our friends at Healy Kohler. Uh, we have this 5,000 square foot exhibit space and you can see it, it really, uh, it's kind of a journey through time. And that's the whole purpose of this. We want to take you through time as if you're traveling through all these different eras and meeting all these different people and seeing the artifacts that they left behind. Um, and so you can see it, it weaves through the space very creatively. And uh, we're going to talk more about these galleries as the plans get more finalized. I don't want to promise anything <laughs> quite yet before we've uh, gotten a little further into our, our process. But, uh, uh, you know, you can see the, the cases and uh, a lot of the, the different creative elements uh, throughout the, the gallery. So is there anything, Terry, that you wanted to, to comment on from, from the last two slides here? Yeah, so it is, it is about taking a journey. We want the visitors to take a journey with us. Um, and there's a little bit of uh, wanting to provide that entertainment and enjoyment as they're walking through. So, oh, can you bring that back up? Sure, yes. 
you know, so this whole idea that, um, so you enter right here at this space. Um, oh, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. You, you enter right there and you're, we're, we're going to, we're thinking about uh, projecting onto a rock formation um, because that's what Gettysburg is known about. And that ties back to uh, the, the whole idea of um, connecting it to the battle. Um, and as you weave through those initial gallery experiences, <clears throat> you end up at a great sight line looking at the outside of a house. Um, and we don't know exactly what that house is just yet, but we're going to allow people to go in there and that's going to be our immersive env environment um, of experiencing what it might have been like uh, during that, that, the battle with that. And then from there, as you exit, you move back through uh, the Gettysburg Address and then that last area of memorialization and the, the county today. So you're starting to see a little bit of how it's being formulated. What I really want to say, because I'm sure some people are saying, well, that's just a black and white drawing. What, where's, the, where's the pizzazz? So we're, we're halfway through coming up with the concept and creating what this experience is right now. Um, in, in June, we should be completed with that vision and you'll start seeing some of those visuals of exactly what that experience is. But that's also one of the first steps. We'll go through the next nine months after that, developing it, writing the stories, acquiring the images, placing the artifacts. Um, and then from there, it goes out to bid for a fabricator and media producer. And then they start and that will take another 10 months. Right. That is wonderful. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it's just been such a pleasure to, to work with the team at, at Healy Kohler. Um, and, uh, you know, we are we're so excited about where this is headed and the creativity that that all of you have brought to this process. So um, I just want to thank Terry again. And and I, I want to thank all of you for, for joining us for our weekly program series once again. Um, and uh, we hope to be with you again next Thursday. Um, we'll, we'll see what that program is. We'll have to, <laughs> to figure that out over the next few days. But uh, we have kept up the series for over a year now uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. And it's been wonderful to have all of you with us. Um, so if you enjoyed the, the video tonight, I hope you'll hit the donate button and help support our project and our, our new museum. Um, we're so excited about where things are headed here. Um, and I, I should mention again that uh, I owe a lot to Tim Smith and Sue Boardman. Uh, Sue is on our board uh, of trustees and Tim is uh, our historian here at the Adams County Historical Society. The, the two of them together have, have already made great strides in putting together uh, the stories and the artifacts that, that we're planning to, to highlight here. So thanks again, Terry. And, and thank you all for joining us for our, our program this week. Take care. Thank you. Bye, everybody.